All right, ladies and germs. This is how you actually make displacements, but real. I'm just going to make like a little scene. And we're going to see how it goes. So first and foremost, the most important thing that I think Top Hat Waffle talks about a little bit is work in powers of two. And the reason for doing this is sewing. But um, yeah, general workflow. Start with your boxes. And then I tend to create the displacement right away. Um, just so it's there and I have like the face visible, more importantly. Um, and then just for this example, we're going to kind of create a forest floor. And then we're going to create some walls around it. So this works. Uh, we're going to find a different texture. Make sure the line's okay. Good enough. And from here, um, just to start out, I'm going to select which edges I want to be the displacement um, and create them from there. But um, again, I think a lot of the times when I'm doing this sort of thing where I'm just in the block out phase in particular, I will... Ooh, I don't have quick select. Where is it? Is it this? Yeah, there we go. So also cool tip. If you do hit this, I think it's, yeah, it's auto selection. Whenever you're in the vertex tool, which uh, the hotkey is shift V for that, which is your best, best friend for dealing with this sort of thing. Um, when you drag and select, it highlights anything in the section selection instantly. And it's a lot more convenient than having to hit enter. But yeah, so as you can see, the kind of the first thing that I did is the thing with displacements is as long as it's a cube, you can manipulate it however you want to. And the best way to go about shaping your geometry is using the vertex tool to block out the shapes that you want before you even start manipulating anything around yet. Um, so in this case, I just kind of want to, we're just gonna make this pretty simple. We're going to line it up like this. I know I, I kind of prefaced this with work in powers of two, but, um, for this, I'm going to try and make this as versatile as I can, even though I'm like flying by the seat of my pants and that's not a good idea, but, um, this is just going to be a kind of edge and there's going to be a forest up here. And this is just going to be a little path that will lead into a cave. And then once we get into the cave, I'll talk about why working in powers of two is more important. But um, this is just going to show the basis of really loosely blocking out the shapes that you want and the process that that entails. So, um, yeah, we'll just kind of make it a basin. Really simple. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to make these two connect. I'm just going to select this vertice, this one. Uh, and we'll make them kiss right there and just kind of drag this out so it's slightly more even. And again, like shapes like this are completely fine. It's as long as you have four vertices touching each other. Um, if I toggle, draw. Actually, that's in the setting, so never mind. If I go to, if I select all of this, go to the vertex tool, you can see we have all of the vertices of this mass is touching. And then what that allows us to do is, here's my other quick tip of the day. There's a select adjacent button in the face edit sheet that allows you to select adjacent displacement faces. I think it's a little bit clunky and it definitely won't work if the vertices aren't touching, but it's a, it's a, a more rapid way to select. Not ah, see, even there it didn't work. <laughs> I spoke too soon, but generally it's a more rapid way to 
select all the touching faces. Um, yeah, what we're going to do now with all of this little structure here is because all the vertices are touching, we're going to subdivide it. And then as you can see, that's what gives it um, the kind of natural curvature. Um, yeah. And then from here, I'm going to leave that as it is for now and paint that up a little bit later. Because what I kind of want to do is make a rock wall that covers this entire area here. Um, so you're going to find a better texture. This is all from Half-Life 2. Make it 512. And I'll be able to show a fancy little trick with this. Um, it's an okay scale. That works. We're going to just create this face. I'm going to copy this over. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this 256 units exactly. Um, that's half of this face. And then what I'm going to do on this other side here is I'm going to cut this at an angle and copy it over. Oop, kind of messed it up. I'm going to shift it over so that this is also 256 units. And then here we have a little hole that we're going to turn into a cave entrance. And now the reason I did this is because displacements that are adjacent to each other that are powers of two and whose um, edges line up with their origin, I'm pretty sure that's the criteria, they will sew together. So if I were to just take this guy here and... Um, Push him out a little bit on whatever axis. We'll just fuck it up, I guess. We'll do that. And then if I select these two, they will sew together because they have two edges touching and they're both powers of two. And same goes for this edge here. If I push this out a little bit, I can sew it back together with this. And this is really, really, really important and kind of the key when you're getting into making entire areas that are just completely mesh. Like, um, you see this a lot in Portal 2 in Underground where it's just the entire thing is a giant mesh cave and it all it's all stuck together. And that's what makes this really, really easy to deal with. Um, but yeah, going on from there, I think I'm just going to clone this. Here's another example. Um, it works both ways. So what I'm going to do here is I can expand this up to 1024 by 1024. Um, and because they're both there, everything here is powers of two. And they're um, can I, oh, they're uh, connected. Um, these will sew to each other and make everything nice and neat. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to angle this back a bit so it can kind of give it an overhang kind of look. And also when it comes to like texturing these things, it's, um, what I'm doing right now is kind of beyond the capabilities and scope of what Valve had in mind developing these textures. There are definitely better options to what I'm trying to do specifically right now. I'm just kind of trying to make the textures look presentable. What I might do is go to treat as one so that all of these faces um, receive the same parameters. And then Make it one, one. What if I just fit the entire thing? No, nah, it's ugly. Okay. 
I'm gonna waste too much time messing around with that. So we're just it's just gonna be ugly for now and we'll deal with it. But anyway. I'm gonna select all these. I'm gonna hit subdivide, which again should actually only gives us a little curvature right there, and I think that's because I didn't line up. Oh, no. That is the that is the one problem with lining up um, different scales with each other. Subdivision, when it comes to subdividing, you're going to get a couple of issues. You can, like, that's where it's really weird things start to happen. But in this case, it's kind of nothing's happening at all, which is okay. We can deal with that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're going to have this kind of be the entrance to a little cave area. So now we're going to go full, full bore with this. Uh, pick out a random rock texture, I guess. Um, we're going to make a tunnel. I'll keep the floor 256, I guess. Length doesn't really matter. I'm gonna clone this. Um, I'm gonna make the walls a little taller so we can do 384 works. Clone this up. Make sure all the edges are aligned. Select the faces. Create. And this is the start of our tunnel. Let's map it out a second. I want this to fit in like that. And then let's make it, I can extend that a little bit. Let's make it turn. So what I'll do is I'll clone this. I'll select the vertices that I need to make happen with it's a little steep those align let me do the floor and ceiling at the same time because they match Again, vertex tool is literally kind of the entire key when it comes to dealing with this. That matches up. Take this. Um, when it comes to corners like these, again, to make sure, um, this is where some people might go wrong. Um, it won't work, again, unless all the edges align and it makes a box. But an, al an alternative to doing this is if I just delete this and destroy this so it's no longer a displacement, I can just make this whole box and then select multiple faces on one item. It doesn't really matter, but in this case, we're going to keep it like this because the way I want to do this tunnel. And that's a you know, little corner. Oops, didn't select the ceiling. And let's make it something like this. Drag this over, drag this over, select these, make it turn a little more. Again, vertex tool just doing the brunt of the work. Um, let's make it Open up a bit. Mm, 
Uh, that, that works. I'll take that. Um, so yeah, let's shape this up a little bit. Again, uh, the select adjacent tool is really helpful. I wonder, I really wonder what it is that makes it not consistently work. Um, cause as long as the edges are facing, it should in theory, just select every adjacent, um, displacement face you have. But, um, yeah, let's subdivide this up and get to work. Now, obviously this is the part where sculpting really comes into play because everything right now is way too enclosed and we need to open it up a little bit. And um, personally, I find it best, especially when sculpting an environment like this is using the face normal axis and this is the key thing that a lot of people miss um also if you hold if you hold alt and uh, left click and drag you can easily expand the radius of the sphere um when you alt right click with this on that's what actually sets the axis to the face normal wherever that is um whatever direction that may be uh, and that's how you can kind of cheat subdivisions and really easily um, shape at an angle. And, uh, the first thing I always do is take this distance down to one. I think it's very rare that I ever put it above like three. I think maybe I go up to five if it's like giant, huge, massive, ugly spaces. Um, but yeah, one is plenty for anything you're going to do ever. So let's just kind of shape this up a bit. Um, I'm going to push out the sides. So there's a little more room to move. I'm going to raise the roof a little bit to kind of give it like a pseudo ravine look. Um, and I'm just going to try and shape this up to be as organic as I possibly can. Uh, personally, I don't use any of the noise features or the sculpting. This is kind of, I guess, the manual way, but it's also the way that works fastest, in my opinion. Or just scape sculpting things out it works very intuitively again it's just a lot of i'm just mashing alt right click and clicking and dragging to get things where i want to go Now, because we do kind of want the player to be able to walk here nicely, what we're going to do is change the effect to smooth. And then what this does, instead of pushing and pulling on the vertices, it will flatten them out to whatever axis you have selected. And this will work with face normal, but it can kind of end up getting a little bit strange. And I do use it from time to time, but I typically use this when I really just need to flatten stuff out, especially um, for the player to walk on. So we're just kind of gonna click around a little bit to level out the floor here so it's not completely insane. Uh, just a little bit. I'm only like clicking once or twice or so often just so it's flat yeah that's pretty walkable that's pretty passable that's a this is a passable tunnel um however the next thing that we're going to do is another key part to note about displacements is their ability to use the blend modulate shader or well world vertex transition so they can actually blend between two textures most of the time this one doesn't Hold on, I have to... Let me switch to one that actually has a blend. Um, let me get a rock. Blender rock slime. I'm getting all of my textures right now. Maybe this. No. This is the one I had before. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm looking stupid. Tunnel. Yeah, we'll go with this. All right. So um, a button that you do have at your disposal is invert alpha. Uh, if you don't feel like opening up the VMT and changing which texture is like the, the primary and which one is the alpha, you can just um, quickly switch between the two. Um, why am I not able to paint it? Okay, now again. Uh, but yeah, um, we're going to select this tunnel and we're just going to kind of fairly chaotically just paint this up a little bit to sell it, add some inconsistency. And uh, Jesus, this brush is huge. What is happening? There we go. That's better. The huge brush selected. But uh, as you can see, it's um, the way the shader works. It blends between two different textures again to sell organics because organic things are inconsistent and natural. That's how it works. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, that's good enough for our main cave area there. Um, now we're going to try and integrate these two things together. Um, we're going to paint this a little bit. Go to face normal, alt right click. Set to smooth, not raise and lower. I'm gonna bulge this out a little bit. Mm, I might have to cheat here and use one of my secret organic strategies that I don't really talk about a lot. Um, it's okay. Oh, and also, uh, again, since these these two displacements are different scales, um, they will open up the seams, uh, and that's because I don't have oops, I don't have this auto sew button checked. If I had had that checked when I was manipulating all those, it would have kept them together automatically. Uh, but since I didn't do that, we can just select them. And go to sew and then yeah it fixes it up and now in painting geometry if i have auto sew selected then yeah, every click or so it'll prevent that from happening or at least it should it might be broken yeah what the heck what the frick hammer it's lying to me yeah um but you get the you should be able to get the gist of how that works um shape this up a little bit more Make it just uh, gonna treat this like it's a big mountain or something. I don't know. And again, this is just kind of a burner scene. Doesn't really matter too much what's going on. Um. Yeah. And then what I'm gonna do here is I really have grown fond of um. The rocks from Infra, if I could find them. My godly amount of mounted models. Here we go. These, these are really nice and they kind of blend fairly well with um, the art style. It's a little bit noticeable. They kind of have a detail texture on them that doesn't look correct, but that's besides the point. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm in, since I'm in Hammer++, which is in the CSGO version of Source, I'm using Shift and Scroll Wheel, scroll wheel to um, prop scale. And then 
I, if you would like to have it, I have a plugin that um, Mr. Rogers wrote that decompiles scaled models so they work in Portal 2. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, and I'm just going to use these models to like round off this transition between the displacements here. Um, except in reality, if I, maybe what I'll, I can continue out here. You, if I was being more careful, I could have matched up the vertices um, to the tunnel displacements and the exterior displacements. And that's kind of what I should have done, but a little late for that now. Um, and then it would have transitioned seamlessly. Um, but giving uh, it a more natural transition like this with the props kind of makes it look better anyway. Just to give in terms of visual advice. Uh, we're going to make another one. Use a different rock. Clone this one. Just trying to hide the transitions a little bit. Um, yeah, and this is just kind of more insight into an artistic thing, less about technical work. I'm kind of getting distracted, and I apologize. Uh, yeah, that hides it enough. It's a little crawl space cave. Just got to make sure that um, the player would be able to fit in there. Oh, yeah, plenty of space. I'm not even thinking about scale right now. <laughs> Perfect. So, I'll get in the middle here, I guess. Uh, we'll just keep on plugging. Uh, what I'll do here is so I'll match this up a little bit. Uh, we're going to change it to y-axis and drag it over just a tad. All right, again. And this is, this is where it gets nitty gritty. Um, and this is more of an artistic thing that I'm executing right now. It's, uh, I'm just trying to get it to the two terrains to kind of match up by hand here. Just taking, you know, a little time, moving it vertice by vertice a little bit meticulously. This is definitely not the best way to do this, but, you know, to each his own. We're going to pull this up more. And push this guy up and down a little bit. And there we go. That's good enough for me. Um, and again, blend textures. Now, with these Half-Life 2 assets in particular, you have a bunch of options here. Um, I think this one, yeah, this one just goes to gravel. Uh, yeah, so it transitions into this gravelly sort of green element. Uh, 
Um, but I don't quite like that. So I'm going to change these two to a different version. Mud, maybe. That's uh, a little dark. Still not right. There's one that's like... Riverbed or something. Still gross. Not pavement. Anyway, I've done this enough wasting time, but um, I will demonstrate just like an artistic thing to do. Actually, I'll just open the map. Um, Something that I did in this uh, workshop map that I released is, um, which is also, if you feel free to decompile this map, this is a lot of, I, if I recorded the making of this map, um, this would have been the perfect thing to show off the dealing of displacements. But um, as you can see, these um, are meshed together, but they're uh, different textures and they use the same grass base texture so they blend together um on the grass but then their blend texture is different and i did the same thing over here just to kind of add this uh, amount of dirt and then same thing with this little patch i just kind of added it up because it has uh this rocky texture underneath which is actually this is what i was trying to get so i'll use this yeah there we go Then I'll change this one to this, I think. Yep. Perfect. And now you can see we have like a transition between just uh, grass and then grassy dirt. One thing to keep in mind when you are painting, I don't know if this is Hammer++ Plus Plus specific or not. I found that when you're dealing with the alpha, sometimes it'll refuse to kind of paint it on certain vertices like you saw there. Try to make this look organic. Something like that. And just pick some spots. Raise and lower here because uneven. A little too high. Get smooth it a little bit when you mess up, just to level things out. Yeah, here we go. It's looking pretty good. Um, time to shape these up. Gonna select them all. Gonna first. Oh, I'm a good mapper. Come on. There we go. First sort of business is I kind of want to raise a lot of this up a bit, so I'm gonna. This is extremely aggressive. I'm not convinced that this is actually moving them one unit. I wonder if this is breaking down a little bit. And just gently. Yeah, 
add some curvature. Make it a little more uneven. Uh, something that I like to do with this texture in particular is we go into the face normal here. And then we go along this middle here where the um, the rock faces and we punch that in a little bit just to add some depth. It's kind of the way that Valve does it. It gives it gives it a nice distinct and like kind of purposeful look. Um, and of course, I strongly encourage creation of your own materials to use and stuff like this. Yeah. And then we also just give it a little bit of an overhang. Now, actually, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to point out um, a strategy that uh, Allison Ghost is a big purveyor of, where with all these selected, I'm actually going to increase their power. And, uh, and what that does is that essentially just it just gives us more polygons to work with. So it just makes uh, the, uh, the geometry higher resolution. Um, and it makes it a much more smooth face to work with. Uh, I don't think it this thing, especially like in the modern day, I really wouldn't worry too much about performance issues out of this. The one thing that you do have to note, though, is if um, the displacement poly count is a little too high, then it starts to cause collision errors uh, with the player, especially on the ground underneath them. Um, but honestly, like for something like this, uh, you could leave it high poly and it wouldn't be that bad. However, what you can do is you can do all your manipulation with the high poly uh, and then at any time lower the power again uh, and it just kind of like rounds it off. Um, but then you just have to be sure to sew afterwards, as you could see. So, yeah, this is looking, this is looking pretty good. So, yeah, here's our um, little grassy nook here kind of shaped it up to be all organic and then it leads into this for a little tunnel um, and then I guess in here this is where I'll kind of cover the big ravine style of things that you're going to find most often in portal 2 so let's start out let's grab we'll just use this texture let's grab him let's create our block Go 512 by 512 up here at least. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, we're going to make sure that the vertices actually meet up so that we can have a seamless transition between our tunnel and the actual cave. So, again, making sure. They all line up in our 2D views. I have to move this up. I have to shrink it down a little bit. This might cause problems because it's not power two. That's okay. I'm going to drag one to the other side. Pull that down, pull this over, and if I were to make these displacements real quick, I can, and they sew, because their edges align, so we're in business. And you should also be sewn right now, yeah. Um, so we'll clone this block. We'll take it over, and we're going to line this up with this ceiling brush here. Uh, um, best way to deal with this kind of thing is select what you need and hit Control H. And then that's uh, basically just, if you're familiar with the audio software, this is just the solo. Um, it hides everything but what you have selected. And then we make the entire brush here line up with this surface. Is that? 
Okay, that might actually just be the wireframe rendering. Okay, yes, it is. Um, that's the wireframe of the displacements rendering in the 2D view. Uh, but if at any time you also, okay, never mind. I was going to say, if you at any time don't want to view the 3D displacement geometry, you can toggle it there and you can toggle it back to its original block state. Um, but yeah, in theory, they should so they do. And uh, you just press U at any time is the button to unhide all. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing with the floor. Control H. Uh, they're already lined up. Good, good, good. You should be able to sew. Yep. And great. So now this is again, this is what we could have done over here on the outside, but I was a little bit lazy. Um, but yeah, now we have a seamless transition into uh, what we're going to make into a ravine real quick. So the only issue is I made this not power of two, and that was kind of the whole <laughs> spiel I did at the beginning. But um, again, it's it kind of all comes down to what you want to do. And as you can see, I even just like flying by the seat of my pants here, I'm able to just kind of um, do whatever you need to get done on the fly. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to clone this down. Clone this up. Drop this guy down. This guy up. Uh, and then for these top ones to make sure that they sew, because remember that in order for this brush to sew, uh, because this ceiling is stretched out, the entire this entire block has to um, be touching every vertice. So we have to pull this guy back. And using vertex edit, best best friend, to line it up with this ceiling brush here. Uh, and then this one, same thing. Yeah, there we go. Now again, we can just drop this down, select adjacent. Oh, it works that time. So let's shape this up a little bit and we'll kind of make this entire thing the transitionary area into the larger ravine. There we go. That works. Good enough. Uh, so now let's get to work on big boy stuff. We're going to do 128 by, let's go, 1024. Fuck it. Oops. 1024. Great. It's always. Um, because we've gotten this big, this texture isn't really meant for this scale. Uh, so I'm actually going to just scale all this up a little bit. Never mind, it doesn't scale because it's um, seamless, I guess. It's okay. I don't think we're going to compile this anyway. Gonna make a transition. We're just gonna blend these two things together.
And we'll go one more. And yeah, so we're going to do the same thing we did before where we just kind of stretch with um, our vertex tool to give the kind of shape we want. Um, I want it to taper out. I want it to taper off here a little bit. So we'll do something like this. And here. Get it to cooperate. Why is it not working? Um, again, if you have this drag uh, auto select mode on, it also allows you to select multiple vertices at a time. Very rapidly. That's good enough for me. Turn this around. Kind of shape it so it gets nice and tight. And again, taper it off. The tapering off is um, kind of very important, like artistically. Again, this is more of an art tip. Uh, it's important to make your ravines not have a distinctive, and it's uh, important to give it a look of infinity. The way I like to do that. Let's do this tapering off thing. Oh my goodness. And I'm using arrow keys to nudge these, by the way. And there we go, that should do. Uh, that's the this is the general shape of the ravine we want. And now to make the ceiling, um, there's kind of a couple ways to go about doing this, I guess. But what I've kind of found to be the easiest is to just start drawing blocks in. Uh, make it a displacement real quick. Uh, and then lining it up so that the vertices um, touch. Uh, overlapping walls. Uh, so this, I just stretched this out to cover these two walls here. I'm going to clone it and drag it to match the next two sections, no matter the size. It gets really weird. And again, like people kind of like, I'll be mapping in a live stream and Roy Berardo will be like, why? I didn't know that you could shape displacements like that and I'm like yeah no it's as long as it has four sides like you're in business like it doesn't matter you can bend and twist them however the hell you want to like right now I'm this is insane this is I shouldn't be allowed to do this right now except the problem with this method is where I kind of messed up here uh, there's overlap shoot sad Uh, but yeah, where I kind of messed up here is 
Or is this overlapping still? Oh, no, the, oh, it's right here. There we go. Um, where I went wrong here is I kind of didn't evenly uh, space the walls out. So now I have a bit of a conflict as to how to attach this segment. Uh, so what I might do for now, for the, these purposes, uh, select all of these, drag this over, so it lines up okay with the ceiling section. Uh, and then clone this around. And then have it taper off. Uh, so this way, we'll be able to evenly get the wall, the ceiling in place. And there we go. Oh, that's 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 not good. That's on cave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, luckily, Hammer Plus Plus now. It shows you a warning when you've created invalid geometry. Um, yeah, this is because, yeah, we made the polygon concave. There we go. We're all right, so now we're in business. Uh, we have a ceiling and all our walls in our ravine here, so we're gonna select adjacent. This time it actually selects everything. Uh, we're gonna subdivide. And this will probably, especially when you get into larger sections like this, when you want everything connected and you hit subdivide, it'll choke for a hot second, but it's totally worth it because now we have a full rounded thing. And here's what I was talking about. I might actually knock this up to three so that we can get some good flow going in. I'm gonna raise the ceiling. Give it a nice cave roof. Pushing and pulling. Again, I probably shouldn't have done it this way, but I think this is, this should be at least moderately helpful for understanding workflow. Uh, what I'm going to do here is um, to get the tapering off effect, I'm just going to select this one side um, so that I'm not interfering with the other with a large radius. And I'm just going to crush this wall right in so that you can, you can't really see an end from here if the player was to come out. Um, they just kind of see an ongoing turn and just kind of looks infinite like it just keeps going but you've obstructed the sight line so and yeah um that about wraps it up i'm not going to compile this or anything i just kind of wanted to show um Personally, my general workflow for making displacements function, hopefully I included enough technical aspects in it, but um, I guess more so I found it would be more helpful for people if I just recorded and walked through my mindset um, of the workflow. And so, yeah, that's about it. This is kind of as diverse as I get. I get, this is, I, I do this way too often in what I do. That's about it. Um, 
something, maybe something to consider talking about is if, for example, for whatever reason, I wanted to split split a brush in half, and you can do that, even if it's displacement. Shift X is the hotkey for the clip tool. Um, if I wanted to do something like this and have it split in half, because it's not a power of two, these things won't automatically um, sew together because their um, edges aren't lined up, as you can see. So if I hit sew, uh, nothing happens. Um, you need to basically ensure that their vertices meet um, halfway. Each of these split vertices meet together at the halfway point um, of the origin of the brush that they're touching. And then I think that should allow them to sew. And yep, there. In case you need to do something really funky, if you have just, you did the ceiling method and it's super messy and all over the place and everything's out the wazoo or whatever. Um, that's just a little tip. But yeah, as long as you're careful, the key is kind of being very meticulous with vertex edit, making sure everything's lined up moving forward before you put too much time into adjusting, you know, the painting and geometry that's leveled inside of it. Um, Don't talk enough about how much I love displacements outside of organic things. I think this is a blend texture that uh, Stract made, but um, it's kind of a filler thing that has a blend on it. it makes it look destructed, and then you can you know, noise it up a little bit. And get, like, yourself some cheap destruction in. Uh, but yeah, uh, that about sums up this video. I didn't know it was going to take a fucking hour. That's okay. Um, goodbye gamers.